A few years ago, Pickens County started applying for grants to help restore and stabilize the Coke ovens. We were actually awarded three grants, um, one from the Transportation and Enhancement Grant from the Colorado Department of Transportation. We got a grant from the Scenic National Scenic Byways, and we also got a grant from the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, ARA, all totaling around, uh, right under a million dollars. The Coke ovens are important to the town of Redstone because without the Coke ovens, Redstone wouldn't be here. This town was built for the workers who worked at the Coke ovens. Coke ovens, not for the miners. The miners had their own town. Well, the Coke ovens are basically the soul of Redstone. Everybody who lived in Redstone were Cokers, and they ran these Coke ovens. The people, they weren't miners, they were basically Cokers who ran the Redstone Coke ovens, so it's so much a part of the town, we absolutely couldn't let them get graded or anything else happen to them, so we got together people. We went to the county first, took about 15 minutes to present a plan to open space. They said sure gave us a third. We went to the State Historical Society for the other two thirds. We had the money all together. The deal fell through right at the last minute. Another six years later, we got did the same routine again and were able to get our hands on them. We put some conservation easements on them and then gave them to public to uh, Picking County and Picking County is now the owner of this property. The project began in May of 2011. It's going to run through October 2011. We're going to restore four ovens back to their natural historic appearance in 1903 and the, that will be these four ovens right here. The rest of the ovens, there's about there's about 55 ovens that we're going to do total. We've divided it into three categories. We have two different types of stabilization that we're going to work on and then a few of the ovens um, behind the trees over there, those will have limit, limited work done on the ovens which would just be nearly forming the arch, making them stable enough so they're not going to deteriorate in the next few years. The guy who owned all this, John C. Osgood, who was the sixth wealthiest guy in America at the time, the six wealthiest guys in America at this moment are the guys who started Google. They're both worth about 19 billion dollars. That's how much money this guy had. A lot of it came from right here. The um, coal barons and um, one of whom built the town of Redstone his name was John Cleveland Osgood, and he came here in, um, uh, in the 1800s, just after the Ute Indians left the valley, and discovered that this valley has some of the best coal um, in the country. Really good coal, metallurgical coal. Right, metallurgical coal. What was happening back then is that um, steel was just being form just being used to build buildings and steel had to be had to go through a process with very hot that was very hot the only thing that could be used for those fires back then was um, coking coal which redstone had well if you can imagine before oil before gasoline before any of the the fuels that we have that power america and the world now the only thing there was was coal. If you owned the coal, you had everything. And Osgood had more coal deposits in the West than anything. He was called the fuel king of the West. That's basically what he had. So when we got more industrialized, and all the locomotives and the factories and everything else that used coal came further and further West, his properties became more and more valuable. He became richer and richer, and he took advantage of it. I mean, he created a big steel operation and all the rest, but Eventually it's all controlled by stock, it becomes financial, and I think the financial thing ended up uh, taking a large piece of his wealth away, all but the money, all but the cash, let's say. These ovens here are the ones that are going to be rebuilt to the way they looked in 1903, and the rest of these guys, well you can tell right here, here's a good example. See this, these two bricks right here? I was over here two weeks ago and they weren't laying here. They, you can see the red stuff on the back of it is sort of the annealing that takes place on the inside of these ovens. That brickwork just came right out of that shell within the last two weeks, just as a natural part of it weathering. And if we didn't do something about that, eventually, slowly but surely, all this brick comes out of here and lays here looking exactly the same way. These masons that we, uh, Picking County has hired for this, expert masons, are gonna take each one of these and find the spot that they came out of them, put them back in there, and then make perfect mates to them to finish all the rest of this work. It's going to look beautiful, I hope, I think. 
This is the only picture that we had um, to work with our engineer that actually shows what the construction of the ovens are like. But you can see these guys on there, the ones that are most proud. These guys right here have the trowels. They're the masons. So that makes them the big shots. And the rest of these guys with the poles are the hod carriers. They're carrying brick and mortar. And there are a couple of kids here. There's a little kid and he's got a little dog right there. He can barely see him. But yeah, these guys worked hard to fix that. They were working in the winter there. Here's a shot from 1925, or the 20s, let's say mid-20s, when the Coke ovens are still in, uh, they weren't in operation, but they're still in pretty enough good shape to be seen there. And here's just 10 or 12 years later, you can see the deterioration is starting on the retaining wall. This is the wharf that they stood on. The rails were right down here. In World War II, the rails were pulled up. And you can see these, these iron frames here in the ovens were probably, I would have pulled them out as well. Once those iron things came out, the retaining wall started to disappear. Over time, the dirt came out and eventually the oven started to fall apart. So that's what this restoration stabilization project is for. There'll still be ruins, but they'll still be here in a century. Okay, once this is restored, this cylinder shape will come all the way back out here. As you can see, they're gonna have to build up the, the bottom foundation of this, but the cylinder will eventually come out here and it will be restored to an arch it's going to be just the right about there. And on the front of this, which you don't see anymore, but the four that are going to be restored down here to our right, they'll, they'll have that access tunnel. It used to be a, a barrel vaulted access tunnel that came out here. And what these fellows here are doing are restoring, and they're looking for the false nest. You can see where the floor is laid. This is all fire brick, and it's covered with some soil on top that's since been vitrified and turned into that black skin. That black skin is what protects this fire brick from the ultraviolet. The ultraviolet is what really breaks down this brickwork and most importantly the, the mortar between the brick. So as you can see, the, the bricks are shaped flat here in the cylinder part. And once they get into the dome part, they turn into a trapezoidal shape. The masonry work on here is really gonna is is expertly done, done in 1903, and the same fellows are gonna do the same kind of work a century later. You can see right here, as this oven started to fail, the coking process started to blow the impurities actually right through the joints and helped to eventually start to melt this whole part of the wall out. They're, they're built to last a long time, but under heavy use, they'll eventually fail and have to be rebuilt. And eventually, it just wasn't worth the money to rebuild these once they figured out how to, to uh, pull the byproducts of coal out and make money off of them. These things were ancient history, weren't ever used again. Here's a, here's a picture of what the, it's called the tipple, where, this, where the coal came down from Coal Basin. Here's the coal cars here. They came down narrow gauge. The, the canyon is so narrow going up to Coal Basin where the coal comes from that they had to use narrow gauge to make it around the corners up there. They would dump off the coal here in this tipple. And then here's another shot from the highway. What you're looking at now is the, where the highway is. But here's the, a shot of this tipple, and this coal would come down, narrow gauge, drop in there. They would take the bigger stuff, sell it to smelters elsewhere, put the smaller stuff down into the coke ovens. You can see the, the smoke coming out of the top of the coke ovens right there. But basically what happened, there was a huge trestle down there. A donkey, mule let's call them, mule with a car would come up here, dump coal in the top of these coke ovens. They'd pack up the front of the door and cook them for 48 hours, kind of without oxygen. Turns coal into coke. Coke is what this is. It's lighter than air, stronger than steel. They use this stuff to turn ferrous oxide into iron, into steel, into locomotives, rails, money. Basically, Coke is at the heart of this chemical secret, let's say, that they discovered for making huge piles of money. That's what these did. And that's what the Cokers did, was to help turn this coal into Coke. The, the oven battery in back is so overgrown with shrubs and trees and everything else that you can hardly tell if there's anything there. And eventually the roots will disintegrate all these ovens and there won't be anything left. There'll just be a pile of rocks and bricks as you can sort of see has happened here. It's happening in slow motion. It's tempting to think that nothing's happening at all. But it's slowly, over time, all of this has come apart. The retaining wall that was on here is all gone as you can see. All of the access tunnels, the brickwork and everything that was in front of each one of these ovens is all gone. There's not even any brickwork of it remaining. It's all been taken away by visitors. So what we want to take place is 
have people who visit here know how important this site is to Redstone and that it was so important that we got together with a lot of our friends who are equally passionate about this place to put it back together so that anybody who comes here for the next century will be able to tell what they were. The county, Pickett County, has done a marvelous job, not only uh, Open Space giving us money originally as a seed to help get the grants to buy these, but they're basically funding the seed money for the engineer to design what this is all going to look like when it's finished with the restoration project here. And um, being able to do the just the, the coordination of the, of the guys who are working here today. These are specialists in historic masonry restoration. So uh, there's been a lot of great work done by the county to be able, because the county owns this property, to be able to put these ovens together in a way that'll not only look like they're historic ruins, but they'll also be able to last for a long time. And then catching that balance between aesthetics and complete structural integrity is a tough thing to do. And uh, I think we've captured it.